Watch a movie, get inspired, give back, help a charity. It's time for a movie karma watch party. I'm Jared Milrad, the founder of Movie Karma, and welcome to another conversation that we're having. Uh, this is a series that we're doing that we're calling Rewriting Hollywood to celebrate underrepresented creators and talent across the industry, as well as to foster more diversity, equity, inclusion, and social impact in entertainment. And today I'm really excited to be joined uh, by a very, very special guest, Lisa Davina Phillip, who's an acclaimed uh, actress uh, and creator based in the UK. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hello. Absolutely. Absolutely. So glad to have you here uh, as part of this conversation for Movie Karma. So uh, first of all, Lisa, we had a, we had a bunch of questions for you. Um, one that jumped out uh, and that we love hearing about, and I think you would, you, you have, you've written an incredible story and you've done so much work on stage and screen, uh, which is, tell us a little bit more about your background and specifically if you've had a mentor or mentors or inspirations that we should know about. We're, we're always curious of how folks got their start in this industry. We'd love to hear about that. Okay, so um, I, I always knew I, I wanted to act probably from about the age of 12. And I was heavily influenced growing up by two shows which came on British television. The first being a show called Desmond's and the second was The Real McCoy, which for me was a huge impact because for the first time it showed like a black family, a black British family and it normalized them. You know, he was an entrepreneur with a business in Peckham and there was three siblings and this, you know, this family life. And there was also this this generational difference, how parents who came over in the Windrush and how they fit in into sort of London and England and the lifestyle. And then the children that were born in England and specifically mm -hmm. London and how they saw themselves. So for me, it was like seeing myself on television for the first time. Right. It had a really big impact on me. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could do this. Or this is what I want to do. This is where I want <laughs> right. to be. Yeah. So um, then I joined like a youth group and I was there for about five years. Um, then at 18, I went on to university and I did a degree in drama and media studies. And then when I left university, I thought, right, I'm ready to become an actress. But my <laughs> course was not very practical it was mm. very theory based and so I didn't have an agent or a showreel or anything like that so then I decided to go to drama school and um, I won a scholarship to go to drama school so I was there for two years and then when I came out my first job was the Lion King and I was I was like it's a bit like Jingle Jangle I was pinching myself going oh my god I want the West End stage so for us in the UK the West End is the equivalent of Broadway yeah, so it's yeah. pretty it's a pretty huge thing to it's be a big deal <laughs> yeah absolutely. absolutely so then um I have, I've had a really beautiful colorful career so um I did Porgy and Bess I've mm -hmm. been in Matilda the musical I was also part of the original cast of Ghost um and then for the latter half of my career um I wanted to focus more on film and tv so I have a 10 year old daughter and I wanted to be able to balance being a mom with right. also yeah. working. And when you're doing, for example, musical theater, it's pretty demanding. It's eight shows a week. It's yeah. pretty yeah. intense, you know, rehearsals and things. But when you're doing film or TV, you kind of shoot your scene and then you put it to bed, <laughs> you can move on. Right. So, um, so, so doing film and TV has allowed me to kind of put two hats on to be mommy and to be able to kind of live my dream as well um but in, in more recent times the, the the biggest thing i've done to date was as you mentioned jingle jangle mm -hmm. christmas journey playing miss johnston which it it is fantastic i mean the whole ethos of the film all the messages everything it stands for is just fantastic and and the overwhelming positive response mm -hmm. we've got from the film has been wonderful yeah, I would love to dive into Jingle Jangle because, uh, you know, I think a lot of times Christmas films or holiday films sometimes are pigeonholed, right? They sort of just, you know, watch them from maybe December 1st to the end of the month. Um, but I hope folks watch the, the film to your point. Uh, and I'd love for you to just talk a little bit more about it. My first question is, 
what was it like, um, you, you know, being part of a project that, as you said, and uh, I know a recent interview, you mentioned that, it, uh, you know, the fact that it was about a black inventor um, and, 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 and that that story was there was so important to you that, that as you said, um, black folks could be portrayed as not just athletic or physical, but intellectual. Right. I'd love for you if you could just talk a little bit about why that story was so important to you. Well, as I, as I mentioned, I have a 10 year old daughter and um, we're homeschoolers. So I've homeschooled my daughter for six years. So it's not just been as a result of the Rona. Um, right. It's been something that I've been doing <laughs> for a while. So it's, it, it's always been really important for me to, to introduce positive images and to show that we are an eclectic people with a huge, huge background of many different things. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, um, this idea of black excellence, we excel in every area. And um, my daughter has a poster on her bedroom wall, which has a hundred black inventors on it. Mm -hmm. um, things like uh, the pacemaker, the um, gas mask, um, um, the uh, traffic light. There's so many other things. I think even the sharpener. There's so many other things that you just wouldn't, you just wouldn't know otherwise. And these are things that we use every day. So when I came across the script and the story was about a bl black inventor, I was I was actually blown away. I was like, I want mm. to be a part of this. I, I, I want to, whatever, however small, <laughs> even if yeah. it's just yeah. a walk on part, I wanted to be a part of this. And also, um, the 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 female lead played by um, Madeline Mills, mm -hmm. she loves everything to do with STEM. And we don't get enough of those sort of yeah. stories. The black girls love science and technology, yeah. and they excel in that. So it just ticked all the boxes for me in terms of positive imagery that we don't necessarily see enough of. Um, and I'm, mm. it feels wonderful that knowing that, I mean, I, I love lots of children's films. I'm a big kid at heart. So I yeah, love sure. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory mm -hmm. and Oliver and, and um, you know, Mary Poppins and all those things. And I, and I watch those things now as an adult. So to know that people will watch Jingle Jangle now, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe as a child and then watch it with their children in 30, 40 years time is phenomenal. And to know what impact that will have on the children watching it makes, it fills me with joy because it, it, it makes children see that, especially, you know, brown and black children, that they can fly, that they can invent, that they can enjoy science and maths. And it's cool, it's not nerdy or dorky, or you're not trying to be yeah. white. You can be black and clever. Right. You know, right. wow. Right. <laughs> wow, yeah, mind-blowing wow. thought. Yeah, you can yeah, be two absolutely. things at once. You know, yeah, putting yeah. those things together and, and normalizing it, and yeah. normalizing the black family, that we do yeah. everything that everybody else does. We right. love like everybody else. That 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 was what was important when I, when I read the script. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, and I'm so grateful that it's out. It's out in the world um, that Netflix, you know, used its platform, uh, and obviously all of you, the ensemble, brought came together to do this. I was curious if you could talk a little bit about that ensemble because it seemed like you, b beyond you and you yourself have an incredible background. Forrest Whitaker, I know, was part of the project. Keegan uh, Michael Key. What was that like? And and some young talent, as you mentioned, that that were incredible. What was that like being part of this incredible ensemble that was also, I think, in many ways under represented um you had you know, had folks of color really you know sort of leading the film which we don't always see in yeah. in these types of stories what was that like i mean it, it yeah it feels surreal could I, I mean honestly it does it does feel surreal even um you know i still have people emailing me and contacting me saying you know total strangers saying how when they watch this film it's it's the most that they've laughed in 2020 it's given them joy and hope again, it's inspired them to pick up a pen and be creative again. Hmm. I mean, yeah. what what more do you want as an artist than to know yeah. that something that you've been a part of can then inspire somebody else to do something else? Because then it just keeps going. It's, it's, like, it's like throwing a pebble in water and just watching the ripple move outwards. Mm -hmm. It just keeps having this knock on effect. So, I mean, Working with Boris Whitaker, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. Academy Award winner Boris Whitaker. 
and then me. Like, I mean, there was there was some fear and nerves um, at first, but he's he's wonderful and 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 sweet and very humble and very gentle. And um, just having the opportunity to work with those heavyweights. Um, yeah. As well as the opportunity to introduce people like myself, who, although I've been doing it for, you know, 17 years, I'm relatively unknown. Right. And then also to introduce people like Madeline Wills and Kieran Dyer into the mix, it, um, it affords more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, it also makes people think, so, I mean, David wrote it, he directed it, and he produced it. Wow. It, it hopefully it will inspire a young writer out there to know that he doesn't have to wait on someone if he has an idea he can write it he can direct it produce it maybe even act in it as well right. you know right. why not it just, yeah exactly it kind yeah. of opens up the doors to many other things yeah, and it's it, that's really a powerful point because we work with a lot of, uh, as you know, underrepresented filmmakers and creators globally through our monthly film festival and elsewhere. And we've definitely heard from a number of uh, of them who've said, "I didn't know where to go. I didn't know you know right. who to who to talk to. I didn't know this was possible for me." Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit of, more about that in terms of how you see the current status of representation or lack thereof in the industry for you know BIPOC creators, underrepresented creators, and talent. I mean, I mean, for me personally, I, of course, there is a big issue with underrepresentation. But for me personally, my journey, I've been very fortunate. I mean, my mm. first job was in The Lion King. I also did Porgy and Best. I was in Ghost. And a, a lot of these are big ensemble black casts. Right. So I've been used to seeing myself right. and people that look like me and working with people that look like me. I've just fil um, finished filming something called Boxing Day, which hmm. was, as I said, written, <laughs> directed, produced and starring Amel Amin, who right. is a black British actor who went over to Hollywood some years ago and is now finding his feet as a director as well. Uh, yeah, Again, yes. because you can't wait on somebody else to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And I think if anything, this last year has taught us to keep it moving. You have to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. If you have an idea, go for it. It took David E. Talbot 20 years right. to get Jingle Jangle on the screen. It doesn't have to take the next person 20 years but it does show that if you know you've, you've, you're onto something good you should let it go even if you have doors closed in your face you should keep going it tells you to to keep the fire burning as it were um but i've been very fortunate um in in the job that i've uh, people who i've worked with and the opportunities that have been afforded to me so m maybe i'm an anomaly maybe because I, I i i don't have any heartbreaking stories of, of, of you know of, you know of not yeah. being chosen i've been very fortunate that's yeah i mean that's obviously a, a, a good to hear in some ways right i mean hopefully we can get to a point where uh, you know, folks of all backgrounds, of all shades, of all of all Absolutely. persuasion, sexual orientation, et cetera, um, can can be can have that experience. Uh, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the 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 methods by which we we show representation and or social impact. Because you mentioned a film like Jingle Jangle has obviously so many powerful themes and empowering themes to it and impactful themes, uh, but yet it's a it's really a, you know in my mind at least meant you know children's film that adults right. can, can also enjoy so i just wonder if you could talk about that because i have i have um you know talked to producers and others who create for example you know g-rated films but but sort of imbibe and embed you know impactful uh awakening themes in that work mm. i mean i think it's all down to david david e talbot has been very clever because he's been able to wrap up this beautiful children's story, which is on that level, a child mm. can watch it and enjoy it. And it has mm. all those visual effects and it has dance numbers and things that they can enjoy. But on top of that, it has the idea of um, family togetherness, um, mm. which, which 
everybody has relied on so much in the last year, just staying connected, especially through technology. Um, it talks about second chances. It talks about forgiveness as well. There are a couple of characters in it. Anika Noni Rose's character, she has to forgive her father who she feels has kind of left her and, and disowned her. She has to learn to forgive him. Geronicus has to forgive the Keegan-Michael Key character who stole all his life's work. But mm -hmm. in the end, he gives, he gives Keegan this gift and says, I had this for you. This was for you all these years. So he didn't harbor any bitterness. Um, right. It's also yeah. about belief, having belief in yourself, having belief in others and mm -hmm. allowing, allowing yourself to make mistakes and knowing that that's okay. You don't yeah. have to define yeah. yourself by something you did in your past. You can change, you can right. make a right. new. Um, so, so, so as well as having all the fun elements in it, there is, there are some really deep, um, um, almost sentimental things in there. There's a line that my character says, the magic isn't in what you've lost, it's in what you still have. So for anybody who's ever experienced grief or loss, there's a really dark place that you go into when you when you lose someone yeah, and, yeah. and and you have to come out of that knowing that you know what I'm still here and you know I can I can now live for myself and for the person who's who's no longer here and right. that that almost um that almost means that I'm doing twice as well because I'm living for the both of us you know, so there were some really deep themes in there, which yeah, which yeah. you don't even have to look for them. They're there and you feel them. And again, I've had people email me, me saying they've cried. They haven't just laughed. They've actually cried. Somebody emailed me and said that his sister had passed away from cancer in October. And when he heard those lines, he was sobbing because he felt like his sister had spoken those lines directly to him. Wow. Again, as an artist, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just blown away by that, that someone can be touched so much by the work, you know, mm -hmm. that means, yeah. that means we've done our job. Yeah, it, it really does. I mean, that, that's what's so powerful, isn't it, about, about art and, and, and being creative mm -hmm. uh, in that way. And I wonder if you think that that sense of, um, you know, addressing issues of grief and loss uh, resonated more this year and this past year because of the pandemic. Um, you know, do you feel like the jingle jangle in particular was something that we needed um, because of what we went through? It feels like um, it came at the right time. You know, I mentioned that it took David 20 years and it feels like there was a reason why mm -hmm. it took him 20 years to make this, but it's actually 22, because it needed to come out now. Mm. When people had, have, not all people, because, you know, it's, you know, for some people it's been a, an atrocious year, right. and for others they've been able to adapt and to, to try and make a new and to keep it moving. But but it it, it kind of, um, it came at a time when we, we needed this, in, we needed to be inspired by something, we needed, some hope and we needed some joy and laughter and and jingle jangle has wrapped all that up all that emotional stuff with the joy and with the laughter and with the feel good christmas vibe and with black actors so it's like, <laughs> it's like it's everything like that you go mm, yeah. Okay. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It does yeah. That. it's brilliant yeah, it's, you know, yeah. and i'm in it <laughs> and you're in it it's like you can't it's, that's even a re that's a reason alone to see it I think it's, yeah um but no that's that's very true uh given what what we've all witnessed and gone through in 2020 uh as uh, as well uh, you, you mentioned something else about the film which i thought was interesting and, and poignant given again our focus at movie karma's on inclusion representation um you talked about uh you know being in your 40s and that you felt like a child working on the project <laughs> um, in particular, and I, and you know, there's been a lot of talk um, uh, in the industry about representation of women uh, of, of all colors and shades, but also of all ages, and the mm -hmm. lack of opportunity, uh, particularly of, of substantive roles for women who are who are older than you know in their mm -hmm. 20s or early 30s. Could you could you talk a little bit about why that's was why that was important, and if you see 
you know, hope for progress on that issue in terms of inclusion of, of, of women I mean, and folks of all ages? I mean, I, I absolutely see hope for things constantly moving forward. But I mean, it, it, it also depends on who the decision makers are. So mm. it's not just at the level of the actors, it's the producers and the directors and the writers and all the other myriad of people that are involved in, in putting a show together. So, yeah. so all of that has to be eclectic as well. The cinematographer, all of that. I mean, we had Remy Adifarisin. Please forgive me if I've said your name wrong, Remy. <laughs> but he was the first black cinematographer to ever be um, nominated for an Oscar. Hmm. So, you you know, those 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 things are huge, you know, yeah, yeah. He, you know, he was telling us, um, his son was telling us his story of when he um, he was first starting out and nobody would employ him. Only the BBC, the, you hmm. know, the BBC gave him his first break as a cinematographer. Wow. So, I mean, it's just when you hear people's stories and when you listen to where they've come from, it humbles me because it makes me realize how far we have come, if that makes sense. So yes, yeah. there are, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just in my forties. Okay, okay. <laughs> hopefully, right, yeah, right. hopefully, no. I mean, I, what I mean to say is, hopefully, it doesn't mean that like people think that I'm over the hill. There's oh, still yeah. there's there's still so much more to yeah. go, and it's always been my belief that as an actor that, or an actress, I can. There are always going to be roles because. There are always roles. The the mother role or the daughter. You know, I've played the daughter right. role. I'm now playing the mother role, and there'll be a point when I probably play the grandma role because there's always going to be roles. Yeah. I've I've never again. I've been very fortunate. Uh, maybe it's my outlook on life that means um, different opportunities come to me. But um, hmm. I've been I've been very fortunate, and I hope that it it continues. Um, you know, I, 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 I can play a myriad of roles and it doesn't, you know, I can age up or I can age down. It's, it does, mm. it's, it's whatever the role suits and whatever I can bring to it. I, I, pigeonholing is, is out the window in 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, even if you get a casting breakdown that says looking for a white male, increasingly now people are not so rigid they're yeah, happy yeah. to see other people for that role because they're not so um they don't have this tunnel vision i think that they once had and yeah, that's yeah. exciting it's exciting that that is opening up in terms of casting yeah it is and that's and that's i was that is a huge issue i know the, 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 even like you said from the very beginning from the jump who the producers are what the breakdown looks like and it's important that you you mentioned that um uh and i and i love what you said essence uh essence magazine uh said of your performance in jingle jangle uh dear hollywood more of her please i mean i'm wondering what that what, what did that feel like to get that and that's pretty good phrase <laughs> <laughs> Look at my face. So I'm like this. Ah! That's what I mean about me being a big child. I mean, I I am grateful. I am humbled. Um, it's, you know, some people have said to me, "Oh, what does it feel like now that you you've reached?" Mm. And I'm like, "Reached where?" I yeah. feel I've, I'm right at the beginning. If anything, yeah. I've hit the reset button. Now I'm now you know I might have stepped up a bit, but now I might, I can see a little bit further than I could before. But mm -hmm. I'm still there, <laughs> you know, I haven't, <laughs> right. there's, you know, the, you, you, I don't think you should ever say that you've ever gotten somewhere. Yeah. The, the, the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the constantly learning and reaching and trying to get to new experiences and ideas. So, um, I mean, that essence thing, completely blown away and yeah. excited because of the other lists of women that were on there. I thought, oh my God, there's Viola Davis and Jenny Smollett. Yeah. All these people that I've been watching for years and now I'm on that list too. Oh. Yeah, that's it's extraordinary. Just... Hey everybody, I'm Jared Milrad, the founder of Movie Karma. Thanks so much for stopping by our page. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with your friends and family so we can continue to transform entertainment into action.